we utilize them here on Earth. So it is important that when they do take their first steps that we have uh, some of the crew and the medical team there to support them in case they need any help. Absolutely. Um, Again, it's only been five days. Uh, The Inspiration 4 crew did three days and uh, they were able to pretty easily walk out uh, of the capsule, but we'll see how uh, this crew does back on gravity. Yeah. Everyone uh, seems to be pretty calm and collected and just chilling out uh, as they await for the Dragon capsule to be translated. Looks like that should be happening just in a ne- in the next couple, <laughs> excuse me, the next couple minutes um, as the recovery team completes their uh, safety installations and removing some uh, harnessing connections. Uh, that nest that the Dragon capsule is in will move toward the forward end of the vessel where there is basically in, in the, the central part of the, of the vessel, there is a, a deck where SpaceX uh, crew members are standing by. And as Jesse said, will be able to assist the astronauts if necessary to get out of, um, uh, out of the capsule or, or egress, as we say. a cool view here just looking from behind the seats on your left hand side is commander jared isaacman and your right hand side is our pilot kid poteet you can kind of get a feel for the difference in seat position uh, in terms of the position that it's in now and the position that it the seats were in while the crew was still in space the warning and the 1.21 gigawatts uh, <laughs> s- uh, stickers were a little bit closer to us, I, I-, I feel like. So it kind of gives you a feel for the amount of rotation in those seats. Pretty cool to be able to see the same displays that the crew um, utilizes while they were in flight. Once again, uh, Dragon Resilience has been successful. Well, first of all, made a it made an on-time splashdown uh, in the, I guess this would be, you know, in considered in the Florida Keys down near uh, at Dry Tortugas, and they had a pretty quick recovery out of the water. Um, they are now on the recovery vessel and standing by for the final preparations. Uh, performed by the recovery team prior to uh, basically opening that side hatch. Once again, this will be the first time that the Polaris Dawn crew will have fresh air. It'll be fresh, salty, fishy (laughs) air, (laughs) but fresh air nonetheless. And there we can see the Dragon capsule now being moved toward the central part of the ship. You can see there, uh, there are some SpaceX crew members also wearing respirators once again, as we will perform the final hypergolic um, safety uh, sniffing te- tests. Uh, as I mentioned earlier, beginning to spray the Dragon capsule down with fresh water to try and rinse that salt water off of the metallic components. This is very exciting. We're just a few minutes away. There's still some more procedures that they have to go through in order to open that hatch, but just a few minutes away from hatch opening. And again, the first person that will meet them will be the flight surgeon who will enter the capsule uh, and make sure that the crew is feeling good and ready to exit their seats. For those of you that just ha- that have joined just recently, uh, the Dragon capsule carrying the Polaris Dawn crew splashed down just 41 minutes ago at 12.36 a.m. Pacific time, 3.36 a.m. Uh, East Coast time. And here we are 
uh, 40 minutes later, pretty quick operations by the recovery teams in terms of getting over to where the capsule landed, getting uh, the parachutes out of the water and uh, adhering the required straps and ultimately lifting the Dragon capsule up onto the recovery vessel as we just saw a few minutes ago. Right now, the recovery team outside of the Dragon capsule, like I said before, spraying down the capsule with some fresh water. Dragon SpaceX, stand by for side hatch opening and egress. All right, good news there. Copy that, SpaceX, we're standing by. Looks like those safety checks were quick and successful as everyone has doffed their respirators. And there you can see officially the hatch is open. I just heard cheering from a distant part of the building. <laughs> I have a feeling that came from the Dragon teams at their computers. That, that was pretty cool. <laughs> That is the, uh, the flight surgeon doing initial uh, medical checks, making sure that everybody is feeling good. I have a feeling by his smiling face, he's getting four smiling faces in return. Plariston crew has now officially taken their first breath of earth air <laughs> in the last five days. <laughs> we can see the recovery team in the background um, basically putting up some protective uh, fixtures around the, the side hatch in order to ensure that as the crew egresses and, uh, and, and and gets assisted as they come out of the capsule that they uh, don't hurt the, the, the side hatch seals uh, or themselves. Uh, obviously want to protect the, the individuals as well. And super exciting, we can see that the crew is now prepping the Dragon capsule for the crew egress. And there is, you know, they're gonna be removing their harnesses, um, removing any equipment out of the way to ensure that they are safe to step out of their seats and egress the Dragon capsule. Even the flight surgeon has to be assisted. <laughs> it's some tough maneuvering. <laughs> so we'll start to see the footrests. Um, the recovery team will come in and there <laughs> is our Polaris Dawn crew. <sighs> our first live view with the side hatch open, <laughs> fist pumps, thumbs up. I'm sure if we had audio, there would be some cheers as well. <laughs> I'm sure the crew is so excited to be home. Mission complete, like they said, after five days yep. of some historic milestones. That smiling face there in the side hatch taking pictures. I'm sure that is John Krause, also known as Snap. Uh, he is the, I believe, the content director for the Polaris Dawn program. I'm sure uh, it's an exciting moment to be able to capture both with video and photo the smiling faces of the crew members. Now we can see some SpaceX crew members uh, re recovery team, uh, they'll come in, they will start to remove the footrests at the bottoms of each seat. That will help give a little bit more moving room, uh, or I should say area to, uh, for folks to get in and help the, the, our four Polariston astronauts. 
get out a little bit easier. And there's a foot rust being removed there, as Kate mentioned. Fun fact about those foot rests, they are uh, custom sized for each astronaut, uh, as well as the armrests. So each armrest and foot rest basically comes in like a small, medium, or large option. And depending on, <coughs> excuse me, the uh, the foot length and the arm length of each individual, they get the appropriate size for their body measurements. Yeah, I mean, that goes with the seats themselves, the suits themselves are all customized to each individual astronaut and crew member. Um, basically, they get a customized version just for themselves yeah. for these <laughs> missions. <laughs> now we can see that... Um, Pardon me, the crew members are now able to undo their safety harnesses, their, their five-point safety straps, and uh, I guess that would be the last step before, <laughs> before uh, being able to get out. Now, it seems as though the first person to come out will be Anna Menon, who is on the far right side as we are looking at it. She is in seat four, yeah. So Anna <laughs> is now making her way with this assisted egress. Mission Specialist Anna Menon. <laughs> there she is. Fellow SpaceXer. <laughs> yes. So happy. <laughs> I love this. So excited. <laughs> Welcome back to Earth, Anna. We heard um, Haley Arsenault, who was one of the mission specialists, and uh, and she for the Inspiration Four mission. Uh, we heard her say that Jared um, always let the ladies go first, and so I have a feeling that Sarah might be the next one to egress here. Yep, we can see her uh, now getting out of her seat. <laughs> she and Anna had the two window seats. SpaceX team assisting her to make sure that she doesn't hit the side hatch in any way. <laughs> <laughs> so much excitement. Our second SpaceXer to fly in space, mission specialist Sarah Gillis back on Earth. <laughs> it's so cool to see her. Now egressing is our pilot. Kid Poteet. I would bet good money that we're going to see some thumbs up <laughs> <laughs> once Kid exits. It's pretty cool to see that uh, they are coming out, standing up on their own two feet and walking off. SpaceX, Dragon, this is the final call. Sign up. <laughs> <laughs> Some dance moves. <laughs> That's pretty great. I think that move should be added to the required choreography for <laughs> human spaceflight missions. You know, we have the astronaut lean back when they approach <laughs> their rocket on launch day. The uh, kid shuffle, I think, should be the the, the next one for, for post-egress. <laughs> We 
we heard Jared get one last call out <laughs> on the loops before egressing himself. And the final Polaris Dawn crew member egressing Dragon Resilience, Commander Jared Isaacman. <laughs> Our second frequent flyer in Dragon, completing his second mission in space. <laughs> for a second, I thought. <laughs> for, a, for a second, I thought he was saying goodbye to his spacecraft, uh, but it turns out he was saying goodbye to the people still in there, <laughs> assisting him with his egress. So uh, incredible to see um, what what a day, what a week, <laughs> what a week. And now with our Polaris Dawn crew safely back home on Earth and getting checked out by our medical team, what an incredible and exciting mission this has been. Next up, the crew will actually catch a helicopter flight back to shore where they will rejoin their families. Over the five-day mission, Polaris Dawn set records and marked a few firsts that are critical to SpaceX's long-term plans for making humanity a multi-planetary species. After lifting off on Tuesday, September 10th at 5.23 a.m. Eastern Time from Launch Complex 39A at the Kennedy Space Center, Dragon climbed to an apogee of just over 1,408 kilometers, flying further than any Dragon to date and traveling further from Earth than any humans since the end of the Apollo program. Then on September 12th, SpaceX teams and the Polaris Dawn crew successfully conducted the first spacewalk from Dragon, testing our new in-house developed EVA suits and procedures that will be critical for building bases and cities on the moon and Mars. Yeah, and it was so cool to watch that. The crew also performed a number of science and research experiments while in orbit, including 36 research studies and experiments designed to advance both human health on Earth and during long duration, long duration spaceflight. And over the course of the mission, the crew demonstrated Starlink's power to transform the way we communicate with spacecraft and people in low Earth orbit, including that incredible music moment, which uh, I watched many times and will continue to watch even more. <laughs> now, our future in space is definitely bright, and it's really exciting to think about where we will be in the not too distant future. With all of that, thank you so much for joining us tonight and all week. As always, be sure to check x.com slash SpaceX for updates. I'm Kate Tice. And I'm Jesse Anderson. Thank you to everyone for being with us this week for the Polaris Dawn mission and have an incredible night. <laughs>